Good morning, Rabbi. Good morning, Joe. I've been wondering, does Judaism provide a moral compass for everyday life? It certainly does. And it provides something that's rather unique within Judaism compared to some other religions and philosophies. There are only three real absolutes in Judaism. All the ethical and moral choices are based on the situation. We have 5,000 years of teachings, of values. We have Moses, we have the prophets, we have the discussions of the rabbis. And within this context, you have to tell me the situation rather than just some general statement that's an absolute. You should never do X, or you're forbidden to do Y, or Z is a sin. Doesn't work that way not in Judaism. And that's one of the functions of a rabbi is to help people make difficult moral decisions when they they find themselves really in a situation where there's two things to choose from and they're caught, really a dilemma. Remember, the word dilemma means die to, lemma means choices or things. It doesn't mean I know the right thing to do, but I don't want to do it. That's not a dilemma. And that's very common among people is they'll say something to me. I go, it's not a dilemma. You know what the right thing to do is. And so the right thing is based on the context. And what's our compass? 5,000 years of Jewish teachings and discussions about different kinds of situations. And so when you find yourself in a situation, you've studied, you've learned, and then you can follow the compass or you can choose not to, but that still doesn't make it the right thing to do. But we're not talking situational ethics, right? No, we're not. It's not situational ethics. It really is putting it into a context. And let, let me give you an example. The Talmud discusses what they call the law of the pursuer, okay? I'm here in my studio, and off to my left is a floor-to-ceiling window four foot wide, so I can see part of the golf course, I can see the end of a parking lot. As I'm talking with you, I glance out the window, and I notice someone is standing next to someone with a kind of threatening-looking argument, okay? I'm responsible if I think someone's being threatened to use the least amount of force to try to help the situation. So I see them verbally, nothing's going on, but I see someone take out a knife. Hmm, okay, I'm going to be 75 years old. That's a 20 year old holding a knife. I'm not about to take the elevator down, run out to the parking lot and wrestle it. I call 911. I call our internal security and they send somebody over. Okay. I can open the window and I can yell out to them. So what's my responsibility in when I see someone pursuing or hurting someone and I'm physically present? I'm responsible for based on, and this is where context comes in. I'm not expected to throw myself at someone or go between someone and hurt myself. Remember, God said in the Torah, in the, I don't know if it's in Leviticus, Deuteronomy, you should live by my laws, not die by them. And so we, we find, what do I do? I see someone shoplifting. I am responsible for saying something, not walking away and pretending I didn't see it. But I'm not responsible for taking out my nine millimeter and shooting the shoplifter. That's excessive, unnecessary to stop the situation. And that's very similar to way what policemen are allegedly taught. The least amount of violence, the least amount of physical force to subdue someone. But we find more and more on the news, people resorting to the most rather than backing up. If someone threatens me with a knife, that's close range. I'm on the third floor. 
<laughs> I'm not going to take out my sniper rifle and take him out. He's not close enough. Even if I was at the other end of the parking lot, unless the person approaches, then we have to, that's the situational part, not the, not a, that's the context. They have to take life to save a life is one of our guiding principles. What do you do to save someone's life? What do you do in a situation? And the rabbi said, that's the law of the pursuer. So do we need a 911 rabbi line so that we can call and ask you whenever we're confronted in these situations and we're not sure what to do? You know, is... it's much simpler than it could be. We're all carrying this around with us. <laughs> so at one time I had to find a dime to go find a, a, a phone booth. Now everyone has a mobile phone. So rabbi, um... You, you say the purpose of the rabbi is is in part to help us make these moral decisions. Can you give me an example of something where you would be able to advise me if I had a problem? Certainly. One of the examples that comes to mind is lying. There are many philosophies and religions that categorically say it's wrong to lie. So let me give you a contextual example. The Mason-Dixon line separates Maryland from Pennsylvania. During the Civil War, North Harford County, the Hereford Zone, which is North Baltimore County, were the last stops on the Underground Railroad. Many churches in those areas, and I've visited them, have a space, wouldn't even call it a room because that's too grand, but they have space under the altar, in the sanctuary, where three, four people could lie, and then in, in the evening, the pastor would let them out and send them towards the Mason-Dixon line, and it was freedom. Now, Maryland was a border state. If you were hiding a runaway slave, you would be hung along with the slave. So I'm a pastor in North Harford, North Baltimore County, and in, underneath my altar, I have a woman and a baby. It's the last stop. That night, I'm going to send them across the Mason-Dixon line. Union troops have gotten wind of it, the plan, and they knock on the parsonage. And they say to me, we've heard that in your sanctuary under the altar, you're hiding some runaway slaves. Are you? If I tell the truth, I've condemned the woman and baby to death. And if I lie, then some philosophy of religion say should never lie. But Judaism provides us with an answer. It's contextual. Pekuach nefesh, saving a life takes precedence. There's our moral compass. What do you do to save a life? You lie. Because that takes precedence over the absolute which would state that lying is bad, wrong, or you're going to some unpleasant place if you do. So there is no question. No, I have nothing to do with the Underground Railroad, and I'm not hiding anyone. It's, there's no white lies. There's no dodging. Judaism says, that you don't, don't play with it. You categorically lie to save a life. And at our next session, we'll talk more about lying. Okay. And, and we can conclude that... Judaism has a built-in um, uh, job security for its rabbis because these are questions that we're going to have to deal with on a constant basis. Well, thank you very much, Rabbi, and we'll look forward to the next conversation. Thank you for having me, and I'll see everyone shortly.